We are very vulnerable in Europe. For some of these materials, we are depending quasi fully of other countries. More than 80% of our rare earths are coming from China. If we translate that to Europe, that would mean that we need 35 times as much lithium as today. Yeah. That's an enormous increase. Electrical mobility stands for about 60% of the total demand of these metals for, for the energy. If we really want to go fast, we have to pay a price for that. We really have to do all things together today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Circular Metabolism podcast, the bi-weekly meeting where we have in-depth discussions with researchers, policymakers, and practitioners to better understand the metabolism of our societies, or in other words, their resource use and pollution emissions, and how to reduce them in a systemic, socially just, and context-specific way. Today, I'm very pleased to share a two-part episode on exploring the resource use and climate impact of mobility. In fact, mobility is responsible for a very large share of our CO2 emissions, energy use and material use, both for the construction of vehicles and their associated infrastructure like roads. This two-part episode is a collaboration with Urban Mobility Explained, UMX, a YouTube channel powered by EIT Urban Mobility. In fact, I would recommend you go check out their YouTube channel as every week they publish videos covering quite broad environmental and social impacts of mobility and solutions from cities around Europe. To explore the resource use impacts of mobility, I'm glad to welcome Carl Van Acker. Carl is professor in sustainable materials management at KU Leuven. His research develops strategies to realize the circular economy and develop sustainability assessments of material life cycles, including mobility. So, with all that being said, Carl, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Herstid. Let's situate our discussion into two main reports. I think this one, the one that you did, Metals for Clean Energy, mm -hmm. Pathways to Solving Europe's uh, Raw Material Challenge. Uh, this was carried out uh, by you and your colleagues for Eurometo, if I understand right. correctly. Yeah. What was the rationale? What were they looking for? What did you need to, to bring forward with this report, right? Of course, there is a, a concern of supply of metals. Mm -hmm. uh, so the transition towards clean energy demands a lot of metals that are a bit more exotic than the, the, the commodities we are used to, eh, such as yeah, the lithium, uh, the cobalt, uh, but also the rare earth uh, metals and so forth. And uh, the question actually was, uh, where is Europe situated in that demand for uh, metals for the clean uh, energy? Can we um, meet that demand uh, in Europe? And how could we be able? Eh? So the report was discussing, first of all, what will be the demand? How will, will it evolve in the coming years? And then we looked at, yeah, what is the supply that is corresponding to that? Can we say something about how that will evolve in the future? And where are the gaps, of course, since that's, that's the whole thing. Yeah. And if there are gaps, how mm. can we cope with them? Eh? What, what should we do? And you can do different things. Uh, no, actually jump a little bit to the main conclusions. Eh? But what you can do is, yeah, open new mines, uh, um, extend the mining. And especially in Europe, we could look at more mining in Europe. We can also try to import more and eh, to have very good relations with African countries and other countries that are suppliers of, of the resources for these metals. So that's more the, the geopolitical game. And for that, we also need a lot of infrastructure in Europe. But of course, we can also try to recycle much more. Eh? And our study was also looking at that. So when uh, can recycling deliver us yeah, a, a, a decent amount of, of these uh, resources that we need. And uh, yeah, at last, we also have to look at a circular economy. Uh, can circular economy strategies, can they reduce the demand actually for these metals? So that's a bit mm. the, the context. We are very vulnerable in Europe. We all know that. Uh, we are depending 
for some of these materials, we are depending uh, quasi fully uh, of other countries for the rare earths. That's, that's very obvious. And more than 80% of our rare earths are coming from China. Uh, for lithium, that's also obvious. Uh, uh, most of lithium is, is coming from uh, South American countries today. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But also for commodities that we also will need, uh, such as nickel. Uh, um, yeah, also there we see that we de depend a lot of, again, from China, but more and more also from Indonesia. Eh? Mm. So uh, geopolitics are very important there. And certainly today, yeah, with all the, 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 the crisis and the COVID and the Ukraine war and, and so forth, um, that's important that, that, that in Europe we get a position that is a bit more um, autonomous, uh, let's say. And that's also the reason why the Critical Raw Materials Act has been or will be voted to make sure that our economy can rely on a steady supply of these, these uh, metals. Yeah, I think it's important to, as you, as you mentioned, you underlined, so there, there is the geopolitical side, but there is also the decarbonization side. So Europe is now pushing very fast, trying to, um, well, reduce the fossil fuel uh, dependency and perhaps push it to another dependency, the, the one of metals that we, we're going to see. Exactly. Yeah. However, there's a catch, of course. You know, the, the new, mm. the, the, the clean energy technologies, including electric vehicles, photovoltaic mm. panels, wind turbines, and also the electrification of our mix, yeah. the grids and all of this, will require a lot more metals than before. Yeah. yeah. So for the, yeah. for the same thing, they will require more elements, right? Yeah. yeah. Perhaps could we give a brief reminder of what is the situation today of metal use and what do you think is going to happen later? So, for instance, I think we extract 100 gigatons per year, total materials. Yeah. And we, globally, yeah? Uh, globally, exactly, yeah. exactly. Not only Europe. Uh, Europe must be a fraction, like 10. I don't know how mm -hmm. much it must mm -hmm. be. But uh, we, have, we extract around 2 gigatons of steel. Mm -hmm. Out of this, 1.8 or something like that. And then we, we go to, if I understand, 100 million tons of aluminum and uh, copper and nickel and stuff like that. And then the rest of these rare or exotic metals, it's just around 100 kilotons per year or something like that. How do you see this mix today and what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? First of all, you named the different applications or the different uh, things we need for the mm. clean energy transition but I, I, I really wanted to stress here, especially for this podcast, yeah, yeah. that for this transition towards uh, electrical mobility, that stands for about 60% of the total demand of these uh, transition uh, metals for, for the energy transition. So solar panels and things like that are important as well. Eh? But the biggest share is is for electrical uh, mobility mm -hmm. so we have to be aware of that and yeah, you have that's to in europe or also globally globally yeah yeah, yeah. yeah okay. that's that's globally yeah 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 concerning the, the the metals we have to actually discern two types of of materials eh? you have yeah the, the the metals that are very specific for this energy transition and lithium is is one of them there we see that the increase in demand is, is really enormous. Uh, so globally, uh, the, the increase for the energy, energy transition of demand for lithium is uh, 21 times uh, the demand in 2020 mm -hmm. by 2050. Uh, 21 times globally. If you look at that, if you translate that to Europe, where things are expected to evolve a bit faster and, and it's also very much stimulated by the uh, European Commission to go faster. That would mean that we need 35 times as much lithium as today. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's an enormous increase. In 30 years, yeah. In 30 years <laughs> only. So, yeah, you, you, you really can expect that there are some difficulties there. Uh, you have to, to, to combine 
all these different strategies here. We have to look where we can find them in Europe uh, and if we can open mines for them in Europe, uh, if I can increase uh, also the supply from Chile and, 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 and uh, Argentina. The other type of, of metals that we need are more the commodities. And let's take nickel, uh, that's an, a commodity. Yes, there is, in absolute terms, there is a real increase uh, of the demand for them. But on top of what is already used for nickel, and actually nickel mm. is mainly used in stainless steel. Mm. And so yeah, the amounts of stainless steel for construction are so high that it's not a, it's not a ripple, but yeah, it's 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 not the 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 three hundred fifty percent as we had for for lithium neither. Right? So mm. it's it's an increase of an annual increase of of uh, about three percent something. Okay, yeah, um, but. Uh, the amounts of the nickel that are mined are all already large. Uh, so in absolute terms, again, it's, it's still a huge amount. So, yeah. so we still need to, to open new mines. We, that means that uh, mainly Indonesia is, is doing that. Uh, so there are two, two different things uh, to, to discern. The lithium where we really can find solutions as opening mines in, in Europe, um, starting with recycling it better and so forth, and the commodities such as nickel, um, where we, yeah, we could try to, 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 to do more in, in Europe, but we will still mainly depend on, on, on uh, yeah, the, the other con countries uh, of origin. Mm -hmm. Except maybe eh, if, if there would be some seabed mining, for example, mm. then we could also uh, increase the supply of nickel. But that's also for the further future eh, and it's not, not for tomorrow. Will that uh, increase a lot is 100 gigaton, as you mentioned? I don't believe that. Eh, um, in, in the total amount of materials, yeah, more than 50% is used for construction. Mm -hmm. So that will not not change, but we need the specific metals. That that's the point. We need these specific specific metals for the energy transition. Transition. So we really depend on them. We cannot do anything without them. Eh? Although there are also shifts, eh? and we have to to understand that that scientific research is ongoing. Mm -hmm. Take for example the the batteries for cars. The composition of batteries is, is changing all the time. Eh? Uh, mm. One of the, the big issues for batteries uh, until today is, or maybe I should say was, cobalt. Eh? Yeah, where you know cobalt is, is, is for, for a large part coming from uh, the eastern Congo uh, region. Uh, the, the circumstances of mining are not, not that... Um, that good there. Um, it's also instable, an instable region. Uh, that's a real problem. Eh? It's also very polluting. Uh, it has a high footprint as well. But what we see is that the composition of uh, of these, these 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 batteries is changing such that less and less cobalt is needed needed mm. per battery. Eh? Of course, mm. we need more batteries, but okay. Yeah? <laughs> so the, the nickel manganese, cobalt composi composition, manganese and, and cobalt composition is gradually uh, going down. What we also see is that there is, there is a real trend towards more um, lithium iron phosphate uh, mm. batteries, mm -hmm. uh, where then the nickel and the cobalt is, is not... Uh, in anymore, and so we have to realize that, yeah, what we see today, um, yeah, that's very very difficult to sustain to to cope with this this supply demand. But uh, another aspect is that materials innovations also are giving us uh, solutions. Mm. Uh? So it's also something to to take into account. Of course, yeah, we're going to see, we, we can perhaps also discuss in the, in the future how, you know, different innovation over mm. time, can yeah. they arrive at the right time or, in, uh, you know, enough in advance to, to cope with some issues. No. Um, we, we talked about it just before, but perhaps we can underline here. It's, um, 
the, the clean energy um, technologies are very hungry in metals, right? Um, and metals other than steel. Uh, no. So there are, I, I had here two examples uh, from the IEA, one of the electric car and one of the uh, power generations. Mm -hmm. You probably have seen, you know, these, uh, how I think it's the conventional car requires like 50 kilograms of metals per vehicle, whereas the electric one is 200 kilograms. Of course, if we exclude still yeah. right because that completely the, the body is not included yeah yeah, yeah 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 which i think it's a bit of a weird way to to compare it but yeah, in any case yeah. uh and then the same thing with power generation for for one megawatt produced you need approximately sixteen thousand of met sixteen thousand kilograms of metals um whereas for a plant of of coal or natural gas is two or one thousand uh kilograms per uh, megawatt mm. so there is still a lot of metals included for clean energy, but I think we need to to underline that some things are missing. So we're not calling about we're not talking about steel, we're not talking about concrete in all of these. So mm. that will radically change, of course, yeah, the yeah. image. And of course, you know, by um, having a clean energy, you don't consume the fossil fuels that are also extracted, right? So. Can you yeah. nuance a bit these numbers that always that are very um, you know in the in the news saying that clean energies consume more metals than others? Can we nuance this uh, this story or this uh, graphs? That's true. So in the production of this car, we indeed need more metals. We can't deny that. Um, but as you said. In the use phase of the car, that's a different story, of mm -hmm. course. Yeah? So we don't consume anymore the, the fossil oil, so we don't have to drill anymore for them. Uh, for the energy plants, uh, there are so a lot of energy plants working on coal, for example. Yeah, by going towards renewable energy, uh, we have to mine these metals, but we yeah. close the coal mines. <laughs> uh, don't forget that. Yeah, and, yeah. and yeah. Uh, there are less mines needed for these metals and then there are coal mines needed uh, for for the energy uh, production in that sense of course it is nuanced another thing that uh, that we have to realize is that if you have a, an internal combustion engine with fossil uh, fuel you consume that fuel once uh, so you, you you extract it from the earth you only use it once and it's gone extremely linear economy for right? yeah. the metals what yeah. and we have done simulations on that yeah for the metals there will be an enormous demand the coming 10 20 even 30 years but if you set up the right recycling systems uh, we can keep a lot of these, not 100%, I know, but we can keep a lot of these metals into the system. So by mining once these metals, we can keep them a very long time. Eh? And so they are not uh, just consumed once, but they are consumed for, for a very long lifetime. Mm. And that's, that's the main difference, I think, between yeah, these, these metals that are now mined and the fossil fuels. So, yeah, I, I, I really think in that sense we have to nuance that story. Yeah. Uh, but of course, people are only looking at the first years. Uh, yes, and, of course. And even in our simulations, we even see that if we want to take off electrical vehicle production, uh, to take off that uh, at, a, at a high speed as the Commission wants, that there will be even a peak in... Um, greenhouse gas emissions of course since you have to produce them eh? yeah. but that's only a short peak of some years and, and we have to go through that if we want to accelerate uh, this this transition yeah it seems like a weird trade-off to, yeah, <laughs> to, to go uphill in order to yeah, yeah. Uh, and also there is another small um, thing that we could discuss about which is efficiency gains as well with electrification with electrical mobility and many of these the, the efficiency is much, much higher than their counterpart, their fossil fuel counterpart, no? Yeah, they are. Uh, only a side remark with that. Uh, so uh, the, the weight of cars is also a bit increasing uh, with, yes. with these batteries and, and, and so forth. 
but again, uh, uh, but there are more materials innovations, and the weight is even more increasing since we want more comfort, eh? <laughs> and the size of the cars is also increasing, and so forth. But therefore, I'm I'm really pleading uh, that um, yeah, car manufacturers are really working on light weighting eh, of their cars. Going to uh, body in white in, 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 in composite materials, for example, uh, doing uh, eco design, uh, using additive manufacturing so that, they, they, that, that certain components can be hollow and, and things like that. Mm. Um, so there still is a, an enormous range uh, possible, uh, an improvement possible, since it's, it's still very inefficient uh, to transport 80 kilograms of course for, for a person with a car of 1200 kilograms or more and that that is the main inefficiency i would say you're right yeah yeah of course i mean this is for uh, personal uh, mobility right yeah. yeah that's for personal yeah. mobility um okay we have some context now about clean energies that are metal hungry that um we briefly discussed about the projections of metal Mm. Uh, perhaps we can re-give some elements. I see them there on the corner. Uh, mm. You have the IEA, um, so the International Energy Agency uh, mm. projections. And there are two scenarios over there. There is the sustainable development scenario, which is more of a plausible path um, to achieve the, the 1.5 degree. And there is the stated policy scenario. Mm. Uh, so these are quite different and they both say that we're going to require a different amount of uh, metals for this transition. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us what, what these two graphs uh, underline and perhaps what is, you mentioned 60% mo that was mobility in this metal uh, consumption yes. of this transition, right? Yes, yes, yes. Well, for the stated policies, um, that's the, the baseline that we used for that report. Uh, that's what's on the table today mm -hmm. uh, by uh, governmental agencies. Uh, and that's actually not enough to reach uh, the net zero emission goal in 2050. Mm -hmm. uh, so there you should look at the sustainable development uh, scenario. If you want to follow that scenario, you have to accelerate you have to accelerate actually the, the the transition so then you need on the short term eh, you need more of these these metals but the general principle is the more urgent things become or the more you could also say the more impatient you are to uh, install renewable energy electrical mobility and so forth yeah the more of these metals you need the coming Yes, and so in, 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 in the projections we made, we saw that for a bunch of, met of, of metals such as lithium, nickel, uh, the rare earths, uh, cobalt, uh, it, it will become difficult even in, in these stated policy scenarios. It will become difficult to, to fill up the gap between this demand and the supply that there is today. Uh, but if you want to go to sustainable development uh, goal scenario, that it even becomes yeah, almost impossible to fill up that gap. The coming 10 years, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. the important part, the coming 10 years. Seven now, yeah. <laughs> since afterwards, eh, in our projections, we are quite optimistic. Eh? Mm. Afterwards, new mines are opened, recycling systems should be already in place. Eh, for the lithium, for example... Um, we are convinced that from the lithium in, 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 in cars, uh, we can, by 2040, we can recycle uh, more than 70%, even 77, uh, uh, 77%. Uh, so that fills in already a, a good part of the demand for new lithium. On top of that, uh, in 20, 30 years, we can expect that we are shifting from a new demand for these metals, for all these new products, to a replacement demand for replacing end of life. Uh, so all these things make uh, that we actually can be quite optimistic towards the, the longer future. 
2040, 2050. Mm. But the problem is now, of course. Yeah. Eh? And again, if we really want to go fast, yeah, we have to pay, to pay a price for that. And uh, if we want to get to go fast, we really have to, to do yeah, all things together today. We have to open new <laughs> minds. We yeah. have to uh, have the, 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 the good processing facilities. We have to import a lot uh, and, and have good contacts, of course. And we have to start recycling. The recycling will not uh, uh, deliver a lot of these, these, these uh, materials today. But if we want them within 10, 15 years, we have to start today already. Eh? So all these things together, we have to do, to do that today. And why not? Eh? try to have some other circular economy strategies as well already today, yeah? such as more sharing. You could also call light rating of cars uh, a, a strategy. Since if you have lighter cars, you need lighter, uh, you only need lighter motors and, 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 uh, and so forth. Eh? So that also has an impact on, on, on the demand of, of the metals. Yeah. So all these thing, things to, together have to, 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 to start today. We need that for accelerating this transition. Two, two, two comments uh, on this. I think it's uh, important to, first of all, when we see the, the amount of metals, they seem quite small. So we talk about 45 yeah, yeah. or 75 megatons. Mm. So they seem relatively small, right? Yeah. But as you mentioned, time is yes. of essence, right? And over there, there is, sorry, there is a small parenthesis of methodological uh, uh, uh. jargon, let's say. So we use a lot of the, the terms of stocks and flows, right? Yes, yeah. So... In the planet, there might be enough materials, as you say, to mine them on the long run. Yes. So we have enough stock, but the flow is the problem. We mm. cannot extract as fast in one year, I don't know how much it is, uh, three, 35 times more yeah. uh, lithium, yeah. right? I mean, from, exactly. one, yeah. from one day to another, we need the infrastructure. In order to build an infrastructure, it takes you years and years and years. Yeah. So there is this stock flow problem. And the second yeah. stock flow problem is... As you mentioned, if we build electric vehicles or if we make a photovoltaic panels, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we're going to build a stock from which we can recycle. Yeah. But today yeah. there is, in some cases, not enough stock in order to recycle. So there is this. Yeah, there is not enough outflow uh, yet. Ex eh? yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So there, there, I think it's quite important to 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 remind these two elements. Mm -hmm. there, there is stock in both cases. Yeah. So in terms of yeah. anthropogenic stock, but also geogenic stock. Yeah. But it's the speed that yeah. is uh, uh, going to uh, be uh, a difficult uh, uh, part, uh, uh, no? Yeah. Exactly. And for the, for, for, for the geological stock, uh, um, the, the lithosphere stock, let's call it, um, for most metals, there is enough. Uh, um, but indeed, um, time is, is important since yeah, opening mines yeah, that's an enormous investment in money, but also in, in, in time, in, in labor. Uh, that's not that easy. Uh, we also have to realize, and that's maybe another point, of course, that new mines often are in more uh, ecological vulnerable regions. Uh, if you look at stocks for rare earths, for example, in Europe, yeah, more in the northern mm -hmm. regions or in, in Greenland, even if you look... Uh, to what is happening today with the nickel. Uh, so I said already that Indonesia is becoming bigger and bigger a supplier of nickel. Uh, yeah, but the conditions are not that ideal. Uh, uh, to, to deforestation, etc., <laughs> etc., et right? Yeah, the deforestation. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of, of these mines near the oceans and, and, and polluted water is, is, is also dumped in the oceans and, and things like that. So there are problems uh, regard, with regard to the uh, environmental side as well with that. And so, um, yeah, also there, it, it might be good to, to, to be not too impatient. Eh? So that that's, <laughs> that's, uh, good environmental measures can be installed and, and uh, are also checked and imposed. Eh? Uh, so uh, when I said we have to be to make good friends to import uh, metals, we can also be critical on that. Of course, uh, it should be done 
in a environmentally friendly way and, and to European standards as well. It's a difficult compromise, of course. You know, I mean, it's it's, uh, it's very difficult. Yeah, uh, and also how much are we taking? So you know, in 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 mines, the 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 sh the, the more you start by uh, extracting one material, the more the higher concentration there is, and the the you know the, the further you get, the concentration goes down. Right. Mm -hmm. Right now we are at less than one percent for copper or yeah. zero point five yeah. or what is it? Open three. Even, well, yeah. 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 Um, so it also means that if Europe gets all the first stuff. Uh, of this prosium and uh, you know uh, scandium, tellurium, and all of that, then the second half of the the planet that will start their decarbonization might get less concentration as well. So there is also mm. a, an equity element. You know, it's a it, it's not a, it's not as easy as just stocks and flows. There, are, as you mentioned, geopolitics, yeah. environmental elements, social yeah. elements, labor elements, all of these elements that are. And economic elements as well, and since we, today we are also discussing uh, the seabed uh, yes. mining. But if you look at, at yeah, the, the places where they are found in the Clayton Clipperton uh, um, area, for example, in, in the uh, uh, Pacific, yeah, that's 4,000 meters uh, <laughs> below the, 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 the water surface. Eh? So, um, yeah, that's, that's also technology that is that will cost something. It's far away from processing uh, facilities. So you need a lot of transport as well. So that comes with the cost. And, and yeah, if, if uh, markets are, are, are stressed and, and if, if uh, the demand is too high, of course, people will, um, uh, will be willing to pay that. Uh, there are even people thinking of going to uh, asteroids <laughs> and, and there. Uh, uh, mine, mine these, these metals, but needless to say that uh, <laughs> that will cost even much more. Just a small parenthesis. So about the the seabed, uh, because I'm not a big expert on on this, um, and I think it was a hot topic very recently as well. You know, there were some laws that were getting passed. Yeah. Uh, of course, it's biodiversity in biodiversity terms, and also in uh, uh, CO two emission terms. It it's probably a disaster, right? But still. I, yeah, I, I don't know in C two terms uh, since uh, well, it depends on what 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 metal you want to extract, uh, so, uh -huh. but it's quite concentrated in these nodules, so that might be quite okay. But by diversity is is a real problem since it's it's a very unknown uh, area, and and uh, I understand that. And I also uh, convinced that we need much more research on what the real impact is mm. of, of uh, doing that kind of, of mining at the sea floor. Eh? So we, we should be sure that 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 the impact is is really minimal. Eh? Um, but of course, it has to be researched. Eh? I, I think, um, yeah, when we we try to do new things, um, we have to be cautious. But we can also try to find out what what really happens. Uh, something that that uh, that can be done uh, and is done today. Eh? Mm. And, and in terms of concentration, in terms of quantities, is there any? I mean, is it that intelligent to do so? Is there a strategical stake to to do so? Is it because of the speeds that you would do it? What is the? Uh, sorry, this is really a, a basic question. Yeah. But I think a number of people are hearing about seabeds and. As we're talking about our uh, the, the the demand of um, of metals, and we say that uh, on the lithosphere there probably is enough, not in the right time frame, and all of this and all of mm -hmm. that. But uh, so why why this new thing? That's, a, that's it's a short parenthesis where we're going to close it. But I'm, out of curiosity, I, I, I'm not. I'm very, not a specialist in, yeah. in, in that neither. Um, I think it it could deliver, let's say, uh, yeah, some some ten twenty percent, for example, uh, of 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 the nickel supply, mm. maybe. Um, that will impact the the, the 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 price of the markets as well. If the market is is if, if a new source is coming to the market, of course, the supply will increase, and then the market plays, and and then the the price will go down and. Uh, for me, the whole question is whether it's economically viable to mm. do so. Uh, and the, the companies uh, are studying that, eh? so um, I don't know. But that, uh, yeah, 
it, it's it's a very complex yeah, yeah. problem. Uh, since on the other hand, we also have these, these Indonesian mines for for nickel, which are have an, an impact on biodiversity as well. Mm. Uh, is that what we want? Uh, so, but in principle, um, I, I think we can. We could do without as well, uh, but of course, yeah. Then, then we have to take all the d- disadvantages of <laughs> of uh, uh, land surface mining as well. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have an idea of you know this metal uh, consumption that we're gonna need. Also, um, the stock flow problem, the dynamics. Mm. Uh, your report was also focused on Europe and how these global scenarios. Would would be I mean how Europe would be affected by these global scenarios, and you also mentioned about opening new mines. You mentioned about uh, Europe's autonomy or self uh, self sufficiency. So, how much today is Europe satisfying its metals demand uh, through local mining? Uh, approximately, I mean I think I see here in some places it's almost zero. And also in by 2030, because I see here the figure, these uh, pie charts, is there something feasible? And of course, you, you put a, a lot of asterisk, meaning that there is a lot of uncertain projects, there are model projects, etc., etc. But mm-hmm. what would be the best scenario, best case scenario in terms of self-sufficiency in Europe? Oh my God, that's a difficult question. Yeah. It's, a <laughs> it's a loaded question, uh, yeah. It's a loaded question as well, since uh, opening new mines there are. It's not easy in Europe. Eh? You have to mm. the, the, you have to get the permits, and you have the public opinion that is not 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 uh, happy with that neither. So, um, but it and it also depends on 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 the metals. Eh? As I said before, we have the the commodities eh, such as as nickel, which we I think uh, mining in Europe delivers some sixteen percent. Uh, of uh, the nickel to to the European market, which is not a lot, uh, and the the point is that we don't think that it incre- can increase a lot, neither. Uh, so that's by uh, twenty thirty or also twenty fifty. Twenty thirty, yeah, thirty. Let's say uh, even twenty fifty. I and I don't see that happening in in, in Europe. While for Lithium and rare, rare earths, the, the yeah the, the situation might be different. Uh, for all clarity, for lithium, it's zero percent eh, today. Mm. But um, yeah, there there are projects announced. Let's see whether they will happen or not. Eh, in in Finland, in in uh, in France, in in Portugal. Yeah, um, it could deliver some part of it. Yeah. But again, uh, that will take time, uh, five, ten, even more years. Uh, and I would, I, I would stress the, the, the possibility to recycle even more than that, since mm. the time frame is maybe a bit longer even for recycling, but the capacity will be larger. Uh, so capacity to recycle lithium could be much more uh, than... What we can get out of of, of 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 the mines? It's important to to have some mines, to have some self sufficiency, as as you call it. But it will never be be hundred percent. That mm. we are an, an open economy and, and a, a global economy as well. So I don't think that this is a good um, a good goal to to be one hundred percent independent. Neither, eh? but to have some. Uh, um, some internal um, supply yeah. from uh, resources within Europe that yeah would be good also to to have something uh, and to 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 have some impact on the markets uh. yeah in case of a shock as well etc yeah. etc yeah. Yeah. yeah and so we, you you talked about recycling uh, what about recycling is is there already any plants uh, for these elements that are gonna increase so much. Uh, Traditionally, of course, there is there are a lot of recycling plants, even yeah, in Belgium. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when we talk about steel, steel must be recycled at the seventy yeah. to ninety percent, right? I mean, it's a it's, yeah. it's a huge amount. Some other metals as well, but 
um, these new metals, these exotic metals, yeah. these yeah. Uh, metals that are the most needed are the ones, of course, that today are not uh, recycled, right? Yeah, that's that's correct. And that's that's a pity. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, the, 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 we talked about stocks and flows, that is flows that are coming out of the, the waste streams in the end of life of all these products is still limited. So if there is recycling, for example, recycling of PV uh, panels, it's mainly based on um, uh, production waste. Uh, um, but there are poss possibilities. It's possible to, to recycle lithium. It can be improved, uh, still in, uh, be improved, of course, but it's possible, but it's uh, today, yeah, the, 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 the volumes are not that large. It's economically not that interesting yet to do it. Eh? Uh, but that, that, that will come. I'm, I'm quite sure of that. Mm. Um, same holds for, for the rare earth metals. Uh, uh, they are in cars, for example. They are mainly used for the permanent magnets and electromotors. Yeah, we, we, we have done already several projects uh, to... Um, to search for the right method and you, you could extract these metals from these rare earths again. That's quite complex. Uh, that comes also with a, an environmental footprint yeah. uh, since it's, it's a complex uh, um, flow sheet that you need for that. But you could also recycle the alloy uh, uh, the, for, the, uh, uh, for the permanent magnets and uh, yeah, recycle it as such. But then you need a, a, a separate recycling system only for permanent magnets, which is not unthinkable since you have the permanent magnets of vehicles, but you also have the permanent magnets of offshore uh, windmills, for example, ones are, are even larger there. So that, that, that could be done. And I, I also think that in the circuit economy, we have to... Yeah, try to downsize a bit the <laughs> yeah the recycling system. I, I I want to say that we should be able to cope with smaller streams that are more specific for one application, uh, one uh, alloy uh, recovered. Over there, of course, on the next uh, part, we're going to discuss more broadly about circular economy and also about how perhaps the best so. Today, globally, uh, circular economy rates are going down yeah. just because we put more stuff in the machine, right? Yeah, there is yeah, more yeah, extraction yeah. and therefore it dilutes or it minimizes yeah. the, the, the impact of circular yeah. economy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. as you mentioned, this is key to, to minimize the flows or to manage them efficiently because right now we, we don't manage them. Yeah. Um, just before we go to some conclusions, are these recycling plants we talked about europe but also do do they exist internationally are they plants is this kind of the the right uh, push or uh, they all await for some stock in order for economically to be viable or a number of lithium uh, recycling plants exist or a number yeah. of uh, but let's be honest uh, europe is always a bit advanced more advanced mm. in these things where it comes to to recycling Although Japan is also very active, I'm not that aware of, uh, that, that there are a lot of initiatives. Uh, but I, I think in the current context of, of uh, a world where blocks want to be, become more autonomous and, and uh, that uh, supply risks are everywhere experienced, yeah, I think that that's, that's a lot of... Other countries are looking at the recycling issue as yeah. well. But I do believe that in Europe, we, we really are uh, in the forefront of it. Well, hopefully this is also going to stimulate a number of, uh, I mean, we're in the materials center as well. So you have your, your hands on it, right? I mean, you're yeah. in the pulse of things. And yeah. I think this will be essential uh, for for the future. I'll try to conclude with some of the elements we, we, we said and we need to keep in mind mm -hmm based on the report and also considering the future of mobility sector, especially on resource use. Yeah. Then we're going to talk about uh, the, the circular economy as well. So there are three elements that I've noted down here. Sufficiency. Yeah. So we need to reduce our demand somehow, mm -hmm. um, either smaller cars, uh, smaller 
smaller amount of kilometers we need to, to drive, etc., etc. So how to reduce our demand of mobility, material efficiency, of course, by uh, burning fossil fuels, we're going to replace it with metals that these are going to last a lifetime. And so in mm-hmm. that sense, there is some efficiency gain and also some efficiency gain in terms of an electric car that consume uh, less than a conventional car and then circular economy. So we haven't mentioned too much, but there is the CO2 footprint of secondary versus primary supply yes. of, uh, of metals. And I think this is very important yeah. to, to underline. And finally, the relocalization we mentioned, can we relocalize some mines, some uh, processing or some uh, uh, recycling? And this will also reduce uh, in large uh, the CO2 footprint. Can, can we perhaps uh, underline some of these elements? We, we, we never mentioned the, the CO2 footprint, for instance, of secondary versus primary. Yeah, uh, sure, that, 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 that's correct. Um, so for some metals that uh, the CO2 footprint uh, of the recycled, uh, of the recycling is, is, is uh, much lower. It, it even can be a factor 10, for example. Uh, um, uh, that's true. Uh, although I, I also have to say for some other elements, you need complex uh, flow sheets to, to recycle and then you have almost the same processing needed as, as, as for the virgin uh, materials. But another aspect is, uh, if, we, if we look at CO2 footprint, is that um, European standards are very strict, uh, and that's a good thing uh, for all clarity. Um, and that also means that if you look, if you compare production of some of these metals, nickel, for example, in Europe compared to in Indonesia or other places, China, yeah, that there is also a clear difference. Uh, so that's another reason to relocate uh, or at least to, to be in favor of having or keeping uh, metallurgy in Europe. Mm. Um, I know nobody, nobody wants that in the backyard. <laughs> of eh? course, yeah. But actually, yeah, the, the footprint is smaller than if, if it is just uh, in, in, all, in other continents. So that's another, another point related to, to, to the uh, CO2 emissions. You can mention a lot of other things as well, eh? water stress and, and, and human rights. And, and, mm. and they all have... Uh, they all uh, differ from country to country. Uh, there are a lot of, of problems with that as well. And we mentioned uh, Congo for the cobalt uh, extraction, for example. That makes this, this story very, <laughs> very complex, of course. Eh? Yeah. Uh, I, I try to, to keep it here to the resource flows yeah. and, and the supply and the demand. But uh, in, in our report, we, we also have um, added some considerations about these environmental and social aspects as well. There is a last part I generally ask if you have anything that you would like us to, to share with us. So uh, like a book or a movie or something that talks about, let's say, metals, the future of metals, metals in the mobility sector. Is there something that you have read, listened, watched that you think might be important for others to to have a look in order to continue, you know, our discussion. Yeah, well, I'm not prepared for that. Uh, question, <laughs> I know, so. <laughs> I know, I know. That's always the question. Oh, I wish I was yeah, yeah, uh, prepared yeah. a bit uh, for, yeah, for yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, when it comes to supply chain of products and product families, um, uh, there is a, a very nice report published by the GRC uh, in ISPRA uh, last um, spring. That's a, that's a, a nice one that you can uh, consult, of course. Um, and uh, if it comes uh, to to mining in Europe, for example, I can recommend uh, the videos of my colleague uh, Peter <laughs> Tom Jones. Uh, he has made some very nice uh, videos and, and reportages on, on on that. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Many thanks, uh, Carol, for this discussion. Thanks all as well for listening and watching until the end. So please make sure to watch as well the second episode that uh, will focus on the circular economy and the mobility sector that will come out tomorrow on the Urban Mobility Explained YouTube channel. Many thanks, uh, Carol, and many thanks to all of you as well. You're welcome.